Uh, good evening friends. So now we will discuss about a very interesting topic related to pulse called the character of the pulse. In case of uh, character of the pulse for understanding the various abnormalities in the character of the pulse we should first of all know what exactly is normal pulse and how a normal pulse looks like. Uh, here we have drawn a diagram of a normal pulse. In this, first we have got systole and then diastole. Up to this point is systole. And then we have got diastole. We have to understand not only the shape of this pulse, but why actually the shape is like this. Huh? What we are seeing over here is that the left ventricle is contracting and pushing the blood into the aorta, creating a tidal wave. But this aorta is an elastic structure. It has got certain limit to its elasticity. It will expand up to a certain limit and then it will recoil like a rubber. Huh? This thing what we are seeing over here is because of this recoil effect. So the aorta has started recoiling and the walls are still open. So there is some backflow of blood into the ventricles. Huh? And then the ventricles shut down. So this notch over here, huh? this is called dichrotic notch. Dichrotic notch. This dichrotic notch represents closing of the walls. So at this point, the aortic walls are closing and opposing each other. So this gives the notch. And this wave which we are seeing over here, that slight upper undulation, huh? this thing is called dichrotic wave. This dichrotic wave is because of recoiling of blood. The blood strikes the walls and then recoils, recoils back. The walls have closed, the blood is coming back, it strikes on the aortic wall and recoils back into the aorta and this dichrotic wave is created because of death. the basic points, the basic points related to uh, a normal arterial graph. So we have got a percussion wave, then we have got recoil of blood, then we have got closing of walls, then we have got re uh, recoil of blood striking the walls leading to dichrotic wave. Huh? I think uh, it should be well understood. Now. Uh, after understanding what actually is normal uh, in uh, pulse graph, then we can go to the abnormal things that uh, how we are going to assess what exactly is abnormal, how we are going to find out what exactly is abnormal in pulse arteriograph, yeah, sphygmograph it is called. Now, first we will start with the anacrotic pulse. In case of anacrotic pulse, we will see like this. If you go like this, then you have got small undulation. Then like this. Then you have got dichrotic notch also, dichrotic wave also. And like this. Huh? 
So in this case, we have, what we are seeing over here is that uh, there is a tidal wave, but there is some mild obstruction in that tidal wave due to which the blood stops momentarily and then continues its onward flow. And then we have what? Dichrotic notch. That means walls are competent. This dichrotic notch means that walls have the capacity to close. This is very important. Huh? If you are seeing a dichrotic notch in a pulse, that means walls have the capacity to close and obstruct the blood flow and walls have the capacity to make the blood recoil. So this notch is very important to know the competency of the walls. Huh? This anachrotic notch, it indicates that there is some obstruction to the blood flow due to which the blood is stopping momentarily. Huh? And this is found in the initial stages of aortic stenosis. When aortic stenosis has just started, so it's obstructing the blood flow but not stopping it completely. Huh? So it will mildly obstruct the blood flow and that mild obstruction will be seen as an anachrotic wave in the pulse sphygmograph. Huh? So this anachrotic wave is found in the initial stages of aortic stenosis. Now we can guess if what will happen if this aortic stenosis progresses. If this aortic stenosis progresses obviously you can reason that this thing is going to increase. This thing is going to increase and due to stenosing of the walls, huh, the walls will become incompetent also at the same time. So what we will see is that this thing is going to increase and this thing will disappear. Once the walls become incompetent, dichrotic notch and dichrotic waves disappear. Huh? So what we will get in that case is So what we will get in that case is something like this. We will have this, we will have this, and it's like that. Huh? So if you are getting a wave like this, it's called pulses bisphriance. Huh? Pulses bisphriance, it is a combination of aortic stenosis plus aortic incompetency. That means it is stopping the blood flow but it's not able to stop the backflow of blood. Huh? So in case of aortic stenosis plus aortic incompetency, you will get your pulses bisphriance. Hmm? Sometimes what happens is that this dichrotic notch, this dichrotic notch increases in size. Huh? If dichrotic notch increases in size, then what you're going to have? like this. Huh? Now in case of this thing, small undulation, we will have something like this. Huh? So this thing is called dichrotic notch. Now how we are going to differentiate uh, dichrotic uh, uh, pulse from pulses dysphriance? The main difference between a dichrotic wave and a pulses bisphriance is that in pulses bisphriance, both these peaks are in systole. But in dichrotic wave, one peak is in systole and another peak is in diastole. That's the main difference between pulses bisphriance and a dichrotic wave. There are many other interesting examples which we can uh, go to. There is one more pulse like this. The, ar the architecture of pulse will be normal, but one pulse will be like this. One pulse will be short. Another pulse will be tall. The next pulse will be short. This uh, alternating of pulse, one strong pulse, one weak pulse, one strong pulse, one weak pulse. Huh? This thing is uh, found 
in this thing is called pulses alternance and this is found in left ventricular failure so in case of left ventricular failure we will have one tall pulse one small pulse one tall pulse one small pulse the reason behind this is that that when the left ventricular when the left ventricle is failing yeah, it's trying to pump blood into aorta but because the ventricle is weak it's not able to pump whole of blood into the aorta so the after the end of every systole some blood is remaining inside the ventricles and when the next time so the end diastolic volume is high so so the next time when some extra blood comes huh, it gets added to the previous remaining blood huh? so there is some extra load of blood on the ventricles which stretches the ventricles little more and you know frank starting law force is directly proportional to length so when ventricles is stretched a lot it tends to contract with lot more force and empties it so this higher pulse this tall pulse is because of that because of stretching of ventricles and this stretching of ventricles lead to lot of contraction this empties it and the next round because of left ventricle inadequate contraction we get a small pulse then again due to the remaining blood at the end of systole we get the tall pulse then small pulse so pulses alternance is a dangerous sign it's a sign of left ventricular failure it's a sign every clinician should know then Then there are many other interesting examples. Huh? One pulse is called pulses paradoxus. Huh? In pulses paradoxus, what we are going to have, we are going to have something like this, like this, like this, then short pulses, like this, like this, like this, then tall pulses, like this. Now these tall pulses are during expiration and this thing is during inspiration. We get tall volume pulse during expiration and small volume pulse during inspiration. Now what exactly is the cause behind it? Now what is the reason why we get uh, tall pulses during uh, expiration and small pulses during inspiration. Here we are referring to the volume of the pulse. Huh? Now, if you just look mechanically, huh, air always flows from high blood pressure to low blood pressure. So when you are inspiring, when you are inspiring, you are actually uh, stretching open your chest. You are actually expanding your chest. This expanding of chest creates negative pressure inside and it's not only the air which is rushing in, the blood from superior vena cava and inferior vena cava also rushes inside and this extra blood from superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, it reaches the right atrium of the heart. So if we draw a heart over here, like this, like this. So, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava both will empty into the right atrium and this extra blood in the right atrium which has come during inspiration will go into the right ventricle. This extra blood in right to ventricle will make the right ventricle expand and when this right ventricle expands it will press upon the left ventricle. So left ventricle will have a lesser space to expand 
and again the frank starling law force is directly proportional to length if left ventricle is not expanding as much as it should it won't be able to contract as much as it should so this will lead to these lower pulses so what we have seen during inspiration extra blood rushes from superior vena cava to inferior superior vena cava inferior vena cava into the right atrium this extra blood in right atrium enters the right ventricle and it presses upon the left ventricle which is not able to expand adequately and this leads to a lower volume of pulse in case of inspiration exactly the opposite happens in expiration Huh? In expiration, due to high pressure inside the chest, huh? you are blowing out there. Due to high pressure inside the chest, there is decrease in superior vena cava and inferior vena cava blood flow. And uh, this time, the left ventricle have got adequate space to expand because right ventricle have not received that much blood. Adequate uh, space to expand, adequate contraction and we get these tall waves. Now one curious thing which we have to see is that if, just in case if, there is some kind of pressure outside this heart. That means something is stopping this heart from expanding adequately. It can be constrictive pericarditis, it can be cardiac tamponade, it can be pericardial fibrosis anything anything which stops the heart from expanding adequately then what we are going to see in this case i mean this is a question i ask from students often that if there is some kind of fibrosis around the heart then what we are going to see in this case then in inspiration the pressure is it going to uh, fall little less than what volume it is going to fall a little less than what it was falling previously or it's going to fall even sharply now we have to apply logic over here huh? suppose there is something limiting the expansion of heart if excess of blood now enters from well, superior and inferior vena cava into the right atrium then into the left right ventricle then this earlier this ventricle was expanding in both directions huh? now if this space is closed then whole of ventricle will have to expand only in this one direction. That means the left ventricle will be further compressed compared when the patient was normal. So when left ventricle is further compressed, left ventricle will have further less space to relax itself. So contraction will still be low. So basically if pericardial fibrosis happens, then what we will see that during inspiration, this volume of pulse will in fact be further lowered. Huh? So there will be a marked variation in inspiration and expiration in case of uh, all the conditions which obstruct, uh, which uh, kind of obstruct the proper relaxation of heart, be it pericardial fibrosis, be it cardiac tamponade, even in cases of asthma, even in cases of asthma, you are going to see pulses paradoxes. Pulses paradoxes is a physiological condition. Only thing is that in certain conditions it is more marked than the normal. Okay. Then uh, then we have got one more kind of pulse, a very important uh, type of character of pulse, huh, in which there is sharp rise and there is sharp decline. That means pulse will rise sharply and then there will be sharp decline in the pulse. Let's just compare it with the normal. In normal we have got like this. Like this. So one important thing which you can differentiate between this pulse form and this pulse form is that there is no dichrotic notch, there is no dichrotic wave. By this what we mean is that the walls have become incompetent. That means the walls are not stopping the blood flow. Huh? So you guessed it, 
this thing is found in otic incompetence. But then someone can ask that why the otic this uh, pressure wave is taller in case of otic incompetence. Huh? Why it is taller than the normal? It's taller because uh, the walls are not stopping the blood flow. So the ventricle is receiving the blood from the both. It is receiving the blood from the atria and it is also receiving the regurgitated blood from the otic wall. So it's getting overloaded. Uh, wall uh, blood from the atria also and blood from the aorta also and as the Frank Starling lost its force is directly proportional to length so more blood into the ventricles more it uh, uh, expands and the more forcefully it is going to contract so this thing will lead to tall pressure waves huh? and this will be suddenly rising and suddenly Falling waves. So basically, you have to, for feeling it, you have to raise the hand of the patient above like this and then put your fingers like this and feel for the suddenly rising and suddenly uh, falling pulse. It's also called water hammer pulse and certain texture is also called uh, uh, Corrigan's pulse. Huh? As we've already discussed about this thing, ortic stenosis and that. Uh, how initially stage of aortic stenosis we get anacrotic pulse, then in later stages uh, uh, we got pulses bisprians, uh, just in case if aortic incompetence also comes. Uh, then next thing we have to see is uh, pulses parvus et tardus. Pulses parvus et tardus you will see in uh, late stages of aortic stenosis. In late stages of aortic stenosis, what you will see that this thing is suppose normal pulse this, like this, like this. Huh? So in pulses parvus tardis, you will see like this, small pulse with small everything. Huh? So you are going to have a very small pulse, slow rising pulse. Huh? So it's basically because very small opening is left in uh, case of uh, uh, severe aortic stenosis. Pulses parvus tardis represents severe aortic stenosis. In some condition, the architecture of the pulse is normal, but it's very tall. It's, it's very tall. Everything is normal about the pulse, but it's very tall. Uh, this kind of pulse is called uh, pulsa magna. Uh, in case of pulsa magna, you are going to have very tall pulse wave. This could be seen in patent ductus arteriosus, in, in conditions like anemia, in conditions like beriberi, in all the hyperdynamic uh, conditions, you are going to see a pulsa magna. So this was all about the uh, character of the pulse. Huh? I'll just uh, draw these small pulses again and just, you have to just guess within yourself that what is the character of the pulse. This thing is, you guessed it correct, this is normal pulse, right? And uh, then uh, this thing is of course anacrotic pulse. In anacrotic pulse, you will got anacrotic notch and it's found in initial stages of aortic stenosis. Huh? If this thing increases and it's combined with uh, aortic incompetence, then you will get something like this, like this, like this. And this thing is pulses bisprians. Huh? If this dichrotic notch increases, then you will have something like this. And this thing is called dichrotic pulse. Dichrotic pulse is found in typhoid fever. This thing is found in middle stages of aortic stenosis. This thing is found in initial stages of aortic stenosis. Then guess it this one, this one, this one, and like the smaller waves, the smaller waves, the smaller waves, and this one, and this one, and this one. Huh? This thing alternating uh, larger pulse, smaller pulse, uh, alternating with expiration and inspiration. Huh? This thing you will found in 
you guessed it correct, this is pulses paradoxus. Okay? And uh, then this thing, small pulse, large pulse, small pulse, large pulse. Huh? This thing is pulses alternans and this is found in left ventricular failure. Okay? Then you already know of pulses parvus, tardus will be small pulse and pulsa magna will be kind of large pulse. Then we have got water hammer pulse in case of water hammer pulse, sharp rise and sharp decline found in case of aortic incompetence. So this all is the character of the pulse. Hope you understood it. In case of any doubts, you can write it in the comment section. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Take care. All the best for your future.